Today's episode is brought to you by the Daily Gardener Friday Newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about garden history and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and today is March 28th. Today in garden history, we celebrate the birthday of Spencer Woolley Kimball. He was an American business, civic, and religious leader, and he was born on this day, March 28th in 1895. Spencer was the 12th president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was also a gardener, and he wrote these words, Where you have a plot of land, however small, plant a garden. Staying close to the soil is good for the soul. And today we celebrate Jean Galbraith, the Australian botanist, gardener, writer, and poet. She was born on this day, March 28th in 1906. Jean is remembered for her books on Australian botany, including three editions of the seminal Wildflowers of Victoria, which debuted in 1950. She also wrote The Collins Field Guide to Wildflowers of Southeast Australia and a children's book called Grandma Honeypot, which she wrote in 1964. Her charming book, Garden in a Valley, debuted in 1939, but it didn't become an instant garden classic until it was republished in 1985. Born in Tyres, which is a little town in Gippsland, Australia, Jean spent almost 80 years in her family home called Dunedin. At Dunedin, Jean maintained an enormous garden, and it became a draw for visitors from all over Australia and the world. The artist Peter Cuffley painted a fabulous representation of Dunedin. I love his work, especially of Jean's garden. And this painting has become one of the most iconic garden art pieces of the past century. Jean learned botany through letters that she exchanged with the botanist Herbert Williamson during the 1920s, and when Jean turned 21, Herbert sent her a microscope, and it became one of her most treasured possessions. As a writer, Jean had a distinctive style and voice. Her writing was much more akin to John Muir's than it was to the stiff, formal writing of her scientific peers. And for 50 years, Jean delighted the readers of two magazines that she regularly wrote for, The Garden Lover and The Victorian Naturalist. As a person, Jean lived an incredibly simple life. She didn't have a car, TV, or phone, and she wrote all of her books longhand. And by all accounts, she was one of the kindest souls to have ever walked the earth. Jean wanted children to know and love nature. She was an advocate for plant preservation, especially wildflowers in their native habitats. And she believed in the spiritual and healing aspects of gardening. Jean believed that the garden was a metaphor for life and for living. In 1970, Jean was awarded the Australian Natural History Medallion. She died in 1999, just days before her 93rd birthday. Jean once wrote that she knew the stories of every plant in her garden. She wrote, There is no flower in the garden that has not its remembered history. And Jean loved her garden, despite its faults. She wrote, It is not a model garden. Rarely, alas, is it even orderly. But in spite of its failures and mistakes and imperfections, its airs are sweet, its flowers love to bloom, and we are happy in it. 
And it was on this day, March 28th, in 1928, that Margarita Grace Phipps, the wife of John S. Phipps and heir to the Phipps family fortune, hosted the first meeting of the Garden Club of Palm Beach at her home, Casa Bendita. Fifteen women attended the event, and a Mrs. Frederick Guest is credited with having the original idea for the club. Today, Casa Bendita's remaining six-acre garden has evolved into Casa Phippsburger, the island's most sensational private botanical garden. And the Garden Club of Palm Beach continues to grow. One of the ways that the club stays relevant is to have a member attend every single town meeting to make sure that the club can take advantage of opportunities to help the community. Ingenious. Back in 2010, the club installed a beautification and education garden at the Southern Oasis Traffic Circle. The garden features plants that thrive in the Palm Beach climate. And that very same year, the club installed xeriscape landscaping in eight kaleidoscope flower beds on Royal Poinciana Way. In 2011, the club created a vertical garden on the Saks Fifth Avenue store. It's called The Living Wall, and the project has become an iconic element of the Worth Avenue restoration project. And just last year, in 2021, the club created a four-acre park called the Bradley Park Title Garden. Now, when the club began work on the children's playground in Bradley Park, members quickly realized that frequent flooding from king tides needed to be addressed in the plans. And the solution was the creation of a tidal garden. Now, king tides are bigger than normal tides, and they can cause an enormous amount of damage to the landscape. So the new tidal garden was designed by SMI Landscape Architecture, and the whole goal was that it would withstand king tides by incorporating sunken gardens with channels that send water back where it belongs. Now, the majority of the garden is designed with native plants and natural elements like climbable capstone boulders. What a wonderful way to connect kids to the landscape. Now, the next project on the docket for the club is the restoration of the Chinese Garden at the Society of the Four Arts, where the demonstration gardens are maintained by the Palm Beach Garden Club. These seven demonstration gardens illustrate different themed garden spaces and include the Chinese Garden, the Fragrant Moonlight Garden, the Palm Garden, the Bromeliad Garden, the Jungle Garden, the Spanish Facade Garden, the Formal Garden, the Tropical Garden, and the Madonna Garden. It's a great place to visit, so put it on your bucket list the next time you're in Palm Beach. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Aquascaping by George Farmer. This book came out in 2020, and the subtitle is A Step-by-Step Guide to Planting, Styling, and Maintaining Beautiful Aquariums. Now, I am a huge fan of George's book. There's really nothing like it on Amazon. So if you are into creating terrariums or beautiful living vignettes, maybe you're working creatively with plants, well then, George's book is a must-have, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Now, right at the beginning of George's book, he talks about what is aquascaping, because some people are not familiar with that term. But George says that aquascaping is simply the art of creating beautiful aquariums. And he likes to explain the term as landscape gardening, but underwater. It's well known that aquariums provide therapeutic value for people who view them, and they can also reduce levels of anxiety 
and create a state of relaxation. And that's so valuable in today's stressful world. So in terms of your own growth as a gardener, if you enjoy working with terrariums, maybe give aquascaping a try this year. It could be one of your goals to grow as a gardener in 2022. George's book is very highly rated on Amazon. Everybody that I've talked to about this book just raves about it. He did a wonderful job. This book is 200 pages of everything you need to know about growing plants in aquariums. It's more than just adding water, by the way. You can get a copy of Aquascaping by George Farmer and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $10. And I've got my copy. So now it's your turn. Finally, we end the show today with a poem that was written by Sylvia Plath, the American poet. She wrote the poem on this day, March 28th in 1961, and it's one of my personal favorites. The poem is called, I Am Vertical. Here's the first verse. I am vertical, but I would rather be horizontal. I am not a tree with my root in the soil, sucking up minerals and motherly love, so that each March I may gleam into leaf. Nor am I the beauty of a garden bed, attracting my share of Oz and spectacularly painted, unknowing I must soon unpedal. Compared with me, a tree is a mortal, and a flower head not tall, but more startling. And I want the one's longevity and the other's daring. Well, that's it for today's show. Just remember that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. The next time you're over at Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. And if you'd like more of The Daily Gardener, you can subscribe to the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. And don't forget that you can also show your support for the show by using the Buy Me a Coffee link over at the website or in today's show notes. This is Jennifer Ebling. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. Thank you.